Hey guys, so we I my dad bought me the Alpha One. So here it is. I just thought I'd do a video about it and maybe compare it to his one. He bought a 2018 last year, so it's not the monorail, it's just a regular mountain cat, and he I talked him into getting the Alpha for me this year. So I did get the short track. Um I just figured that I play around a lot in the short track. I did demo last year, short track can go basically anywhere long track is. There's not much advantage to long track, plus it's like a thousand bucks cheaper. So I got this here bag on the back, it just unclips and slides off. I was thinking about getting rails, but you know, they're kind of they're like double the price of the bag, and I don't need them. My dad's got them, so I don't need them. Um, we put some coolant stuff in it. It's not like coolant, it's a different stuff. I don't remember what they call it, but it's supposed to make it so it won't overheat on trail. Because if anybody's ever ridden the new ones, you know damn well these things will overheat on the trail a lot. So, I bought that stuff. Hopefully it won't overheat this year like that one did last year. We did that one too. So, I mean, I got the loud can on it. I got this big bumper. I do recommend anybody who buys these put a bumper on them and a skid plate. You can see the green kind of along the bottom. There's a skid plate under it, and I got this big bumper on the front. And that just is for protection, because your air breather, your air box is right here. And a stick cut came up on a buddy's and just kind of busted it up. And then snow was going in it. They ended up duct taping it up. But, you know, yeah, you, a bumper is recommended. A skid plate, of course, sort of underneath doesn't get busted up as bad. I mean, if you're going up in the middle of nowhere you know how that it works so the design is very like the hood and everything's kind of, the hood is kind of the same as what the mountain cat is over there 2018 so a big difference is i noticed is your brake lever on that one over there it's a big long one i'll show you in a second here but yeah there's it's short right like it doesn't it only comes about here it's I don't know whether I like that or not. It, it's kind of, it doesn't really matter to me. I don't use my brakes overly much, but when you do, well, yeah. And see on this one, you got big long lever. So there is that different. That's pretty much the exact same, your um, gauges. Hand warmers, now I hate these hand warmers because I mean, you turn, let's say you want them on high. Now for some reason, I always just bump them off like that and then they end up like that or on low or they don't end up where you want them they go now on that one it has the same one but we had a protection thing around it while well, i rolled that sled and that fell off but you can get protection things around these which i think we might get for this one i mean it's I, i've never liked these switches and i mean you only got high and low so here the power switch i've i've been okay i've never actually bumped it off so i'm okay with that the reverse button I don't know, it was a pain in the butt when you're wearing big gloves to push it. So, I mean, I'm glad they did improve that, too. They've changed, like, the entire handlebar layout on that one. So, another thing is, actually, I don't know where it is on this one. I don't know where the kill switch is on, like, the, um, the cord that gets pulled when you fall off. I don't actually know where it is. But, for I'll use this one, for example. I know they had these before where you pull it off and it's little button right well I've never liked that because trying to get them on I've never liked that type I really do like what they've done with the um sorry I'm walking over sleds here I like what they've done here because their pull rope is just it's a clip and it's, it runs through a magnet kind of like your wireless key fob in your car that's kind of how it works. So I like the power switch. Same as what is on the Polaris's. Same design. I like that. This here button, I'm pretty sure that's something to do when you, with that. I haven't actually tested it yet. I mean, we've hardly run this thing. I mean, low beam, I forgot about that. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't make much difference. Never really use the button. Um, forward and reverse, I like that. It's easy to just you can have gloves on and just bump it and hand warms I like those too because they come up on the screen which I can show you in a bit here so I really like that one thing 
I do get a bag for it because you do not want to be out in the bush without tools. I know it's a new machine, shouldn't break down, but if you ever hit a tree or something and mess something up, you're going to want that. Same as carry plugs and spare belt. You never know when something's going to go wrong. So, I'm just going to open her, her up here. So we got this, rid of that huge honk of can and put a nice loud one on because that's the way we roll. Nice loud exhaust. So your oil, your fuel tank here, which you fuel up from up there, of course. Um, your brake fluid, which you should never really have to worry about, but you never know. And I think your coolant is on the other side. So yeah, that's basically what the internals look of the, well, behind all the plastic is what it looks. I do like this here. I don't know how much it'll withstand if it'll get busted up, but I do like the design. You just flip it open, it'll pop off. This entire thing, like the entire hood pops off. It's just one screw, I think, up from underneath, and the whole thing just kind of lifts off, like unclips. I do like that too. It's really nice. Uh, oh, you. There, yeah. So, yeah, it's got an exhaust sensor, of course. There's your coolant right there. Which it's got stuff in it, I hope. Your belt. Now, one thing we found is we're going to probably mount our belt on this one right here. Our spare belt, because these things never come with a spare belt anymore. That is what we're going to do. Put a spare belt on it. Why is that? I feel like it's not quite. Hmm. Like on this one here, which side would that be on? That would be on. Spin it around. It's going to be on the other side. Uh, I think we did it to this one. I'm going to give you a little example. Yeah, see? There's a spare belt. So we just cut the ties and put it on if we need to if we need to so yeah this is my dad's sled he'll be running it I'll be running the, that one I mean he'll he'll ride this one just to test it out see how it is I love the coloring of it I mean purple green and black it's perfect one thing I did want to go show you guys I'm not, I can't show you that it's in the way stuff's in the way other sleds but like that one last year you cannot just grab onto it both feet on the ground Okay, hold on a second. I need better footing. There. Look at that. You tip it over without taking any feet off the ground. You just grab it, pull it over with your arm, a little bit of body weight. It's amazing the flex it's got with this here, that monorail. I mean, this is what I've just been waiting to try. Like, the ice scratches are different. They come from the top there. They're, I don't know how they're going to work, but... We're going to find out when there's actually snow on the ground, because there's currently no snow outside. But it's going to be very interesting. I mean, that one you cannot just grab and roll it over like that. But, I mean, that one, don't get me wrong, that one's still maneuverable compared to that, that one. I, the first time I rode the new, the 2018s, I, I'd only ridden up to a white M8 there, which is like 2010. So eight years different. And holy crap, that thing can freaking, um, you can roll it over so easy. So I'm just going to fire it up for you guys so you can hear it. See if I can get this one pulled. It's a little tough pulling with just one arm and holding a video camera at the same time. drift it sounds freaking gnarly with the can on it and yeah I just want to do a video on that 
and show you guys the Alpha 1.